Leeds South Bank is one of Europe's largest regeneration projects, covering 253 hectares of land. 8,000 additional homes are being provided and over 35,000 jobs created by 2028. A massive £500 million regeneration initiative has been approved to double the size of Leeds City Centre by redeveloping this ex-industrial area south of the River Air. With this record level of investment secured, it will be the biggest change the city has seen in more than a hundred years. Leeds South Bank is an historic area containing echoes of the city's industrial past. The area boasted a strong, enduring sense of community in the 19th century and was regarded as the workshop of Leeds. Although the textile industry was huge in Leeds, other new industries developed during Victorian times. The engineering, chemical, leather, clothing, footwear and printing industries all became successful in the city. These industries depended on each other for materials. For example, the woolen industry relied on engineering for machinery and on the chemical industry for dyes. By 1900, engineering had become Leeds' biggest employer and famous engineers included Matthew Murray. Murray worked as an engineer with John Marshall, a very successful mill owner and businessman, owner of Marshall Mill and Temple Mill. Matthew Murray designed machinery for Marshall's new mills and invented the first flax spinning machine, which changed the textile industry forever. Murray had a passion for steam engines and he designed the first railway engine to run from Middleton to Leeds on the Middleton Colliery Railway. Leeds Industries sold products all around the world, but as the 20th century progressed, and particularly in the 1970s and 1980s, the UK experienced deindustrialisation, and this had a massive impact on the fortunes and prospects for the South Bank. There was a decrease in the amount of manufacturing taking place. Traditional industries in the city declined and many closed following a global shift in manufacturing to emerging and developing countries where wages are lower, working hours are longer and trade unions are sometimes banned. While service industries embraced the changes and thrived in Leeds from the mid-1980s onwards, the Industrial South Bank became run down, a shadow of its former self, with large unused buildings, mills and factories standing vacant and falling into disrepair. New industries needed a new type of accommodation, more suited to a modern age. The South Bank area is home to over 30 listed and landmark buildings, but without financial support to adapt and make new use of them, it became increasingly likely that they would be lost. It needed a bold plan to save the key buildings and bring much of the area back into use. One of the key features of the project is to reconnect the South Bank to surrounding neighbourhoods. The river acted as a barrier to people crossing from the North Bank and so more footbridges have been introduced and better access created. As the South Bank becomes part of the city centre, more efficient public transport is planned. Two of the first areas of the South Bank to be developed were Brewery Wharf and Leeds Dock. Attracting the Royal Armouries to what was formerly known as Clarence Dock meant the area became a destination. New apartment developments were created and businesses arrived to support them. As transport links continued to develop, better access is encouraging people to walk and cycle to and from the area. Within the plans there is a clear desire to attract people including families back into the city centre to live and develop new communities. Leeds Climate Innovation District is one of the largest sustainable settlements in the UK with 1,000 homes being built on car-free streets on a former brownfield site on the banks of the River Eyre. This was previously home to an abundance of iron, steel, glass and chemical works which played a vital role in the industrial and engineering revolution. Now, new low-carbon homes are being created, 
alongside manufacturing, leisure, offices, a care home and a primary school. The Climate Innovation District is designed to reduce carbon emissions at every stage. The new homes require far less heating and all energy requirements will be supplied by 100% renewable energy. Increasing urban greening is also a key feature of the project. Air Park is set to be the largest new city centre green space in the UK. It is the centrepiece of the project and will feature a series of connected and diverse open spaces, allowing it to be used year round, day and evening, and for a multitude of purposes. The developer has prepared the plans as part of its major redevelopment for the former Tetley Brewery site, with public space at its heart. It will be surrounded by residential units, offices and commercial floor space. Completion of the regeneration project will see the city centre double in size and planners are keen to offer green open space for the benefit of visitors and residents. Alongside this is the aim to make better use of the river and waterfront. For such a long time ignored and forgotten, the river can provide enjoyment and amenity to those that live and work alongside it. One of the first completed initiatives was Granary Wharf in 2009. It is an award-winning development at the junction of the canal and river with over 300 apartments across Waterman's Place and the iconic Candle House. This waterside development of old and new buildings has been very successful and is a popular place for people to visit and relax. The river and canal were an important transport connection during the Industrial Revolution in Leeds and many of the buildings and warehouses still exist. Already a number of them have been preserved and adapted for contemporary purposes. Preserving landmark buildings and maintaining heritage is another feature of the regeneration project. One example is the work being undertaken to preserve the historic Hunslet and Victoria mills. Hunslet Mill is thought to be the last, and individually the largest, of the Leeds Great Flax Spinning Mills. It is said that 1,500 female staff were employed in Victorian times, reeling flax in the mill. Sympathetic conversion of the buildings will see approximately 350 apartments become available, comprising a mix of homes, some with spectacular rooftop panoramic views. Making use of brownfield sites for development opportunities whilst retaining landmark and heritage is a key feature, extending to locations within the South Bank, such as Tower Works. Established in the 1860s as a steel pin factory in the textile industry, the works closed in 1981 and have been earmarked for regeneration for many years. The original Victorian buildings designed by Thomas Shaw, are famous for their Italianate influence, which is most obvious in the three prominent towers. The largest and most ornate tower is based on Giotto's Campanile in Florence. The smaller ornate tower is styled after Torre del Lamberti in Verona. A third plain tower is thought to represent a Tuscan tower house, such as can be seen in San Gimignano. The design for the Giotto Tower included ventilation systems that were way ahead of their time in terms of minimising pollution from the steelworks. The chimney incorporated a filter to remove the excess steel dust. During the proposals to regenerate the South Bank it became clear just how much of Leeds heritage remained, despite years of decline. Marshall Mill has already been sensitively restored and now Grade 1 listed Temple Works is set to follow. These are significant buildings, not only in Leeds history, but that of the nation as a whole. They become useful in a new way, whilst providing a window into the past life of the area. One can imagine the noise and bustle and hard work going on in these places. Surrounding the older buildings, new ones are being introduced. CEG's redevelopment of Globe Road and Water Lane will serve as a new gateway to the city centre from the southwest. It will provide retail, leisure, hotel, residential and community uses and include a building taller than Bridgewater Place, currently the tallest in the city.
The planned arrival of HS2 offers further opportunities for growth. Proposed to be in the centre of the South Bank, the new HS2 station will be an integral part in catapulting the regeneration of the area. It is estimated to facilitate more passengers than Gatwick Airport in London and will significantly increase Leeds connectivity with other major UK hubs, driving growth and economic prosperity. Within the plans is the promise of 35,000 new jobs. Training and education are included, with approximately 10,000 students studying in the area each day. Southbank is home to the University Technical College, the Ruth Gorse Academy, Leeds City Printworks College and the Leeds College of Building. The education sector is already established and supporting students that may take advantage of the new job opportunities as they arise. People across the UK were shocked to see dramatic images of floods surging through Leeds in December 2015 as the river air burst its banks, swelled by record-breaking rainfall. Leeds has long been at significant risk of flooding and climate change is progressively increasing this risk. A £50 million flood alleviation scheme is central to the success and sustainability of this regeneration project and work commenced in 2017 to introduce state-of-the-art mechanical weirs and improve walls and embankments stretching 4.5 kilometres through the city centre. To recap, the key features of the Leeds South Bank Regeneration Scheme are to reconnect the region, introduce 8,000 new homes and develop new communities, increase urban greening, make better use of the river and waterfront, Preserve landmark buildings and maintain heritage. Make use of brownfield sites for new development opportunities, including the arrival of HS2. Encourage investment and provide jobs and training opportunities for local people. And ensure flood protection and sustainability. It is worth mentioning that before the scheme, the South Bank was already a home and workplace for many people and some of them have been disadvantaged by this scheme. Before redevelopment, the South Bank offered accommodation to businesses, often at lower rents and with abundant space. Small businesses are being pushed out or priced out by the regeneration. Many of the new homes are only available to rent and there is minimal social housing included in the plans. The new apartments are expensive and outside the reach of many local people. The changes aren't good for everyone. However, this bold and ambitious undertaking is set to help Leeds continued growth. Many buildings from the past are being preserved and the heritage is being maintained for future generations to see. Massive changes are taking place in Leeds South Bank, worthy of our attention.